We are here at Netruse 2019, where obviously lots of presidential candidates are going to be. Um, and one thing that you've been pushing uh, in this presidential moment is the need to prioritize the Green New Deal and make it a day one priority. That's right. We can't bring back the folks who died to the floor on Maria. What we can do is stand in the hallway and fight to fight to get fight no more. How can candidates do that and how can folks make climate justice and environmental justice a real day one priority as president? Well, that's, an, that's why you need to have a climate debate because right now, right now, we need to hear from them to hear what their plans are, not on day one, but for the first hundred days, to, to see not only what the Green New Deal, obviously that's one, that should be a, a key point for them to be elected from a, from a Democratic standpoint, but also who they're going to be putting in positions of these agencies that have been so demoralized and dismantled, like EPA, um, like, you know, uh, HUD and, and Labor and all those entities that are there that they need to now, uh, you know, kind of reinforce because they've been dismantled because of the issue of fighting against the science of climate change. So we need to hear these issues. What about the Pentagon also? You spoke today about how you're uh, a vet, and of course the, the Pentagon is like the biggest consumer of fossil fuels. Talk about what we can do to either fight militarization or to green uh, the Pentagon. The Green New Deal talks about closing bases, yes, but also the, 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 the military discusses that issues regarding climate change. The military discusses what's going to be happening with bases that are literally in, 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 in way of sea level rising, like in Norfolk and other parts in San Diego. Um, and so I think that for me, the key thing with the, the countries around the military is that there is a need because our, our military is actually emitting more carbon than other countries. Um, that is not even that in itself. So we have to get very serious about what needs to be done to have that really move from the 19th century to the 21st century, transitioning from fossil fuel energy to clean energy on, in, all, in all aspects. Um, I mean, it's a very, for me, it's a very, it's, it's a discourse in where, um, I mean, it, I think that the, the no war, no warming, conversation needs to be there. Obviously, I'm not really a proponent of, of war in, in that aspect, So, it's so, but I'm also a proponent of no warming. You also talked about how you were a vocal opponent of the Iraq war. Um, now we're sort of seeing, uh, you know, an unprecedented need for opposition to, um, you know, to fueling the climate change crisis. Could you talk about what sort of lessons you have uh, from, from that moment that you think we could bring to today? Well, I think for me, you know, as a former uh, officer in the in the Air Force, it was clear of uh, just the power that our country has as far as military. That you know that we literally can. I mean, it is true we can obliterate nations, and that's a very heavy toll that in responsibility um, that any nation would have. And I think that for me, there's a it's, it's kind of disconcerting when you continue to see nations that are primarily people of color, um, like in the Middle East, like in Iran. Um, different parts of the continent on Africa are the ones that are very much the targeted quickly um, and first and foremost. So I would just say that you know the, the policy around how our military is used from a defense, which is called a defense and an offense um, strategy. But I think long term, I think that there needs to be um, further conversations now of looking at diplomacy.